Most of the engines on the Fat Controller's railway were sad to see that Dennis had to go to the mainland for about a week. However, Dennis didn't seem to mind. He seemed very happy and cheery. Skiff and Freddy, Sir Topham had boomed. You two must take Dennis to the docks. His barge is waiting. Yes, sir, Skiff and Freddy peeped. And soon, they pulled Dennis away. Dennis didn't mind the bumpy ride. He actually quite enjoyed it. It was nice and he could see the beauty of Sodor. You know what's strange? said Dennis. What? asked Skiff cheerfully. That you're a railboat and you're pulling the thing, while Freddy on the other hand is pushing. You can say that again, said Freddy. The engines clickety clacked along the track. Then, when they were going to go to a junction, Whiff whooshed by at high speeds, pulling the scrap cars. Ah, Whiff and his scrap cars, said Freddy. Although he is behind Dennis in his flatbed, he could see very clear behind him. We'll have to take another route, said Skiff. We can't take this route because Whiff is on it, and if we try to take it, then he'll be late. Hey, suggested Dennis. We could try this mine right here. What a good idea, said Skiff. Let's go try it. Skiff, Dennis, and Freddy rolled up the mine. The mine trip was long. It took up a mountain top way high in the air. Then it happened. Rocks tumbled, and before long, Skiff fell off the track. Skiff! cried Freddy. No answer. Skiff! cried Dennis. Are you there? Still no luck. We must go send for help, said Freddy. Good idea, said Dennis. Let's go right now. Right now, said Freddy. But what, are your, but what about your boat trip? Sir Topham had can send a different engine, said Dennis. But, th but right now is an emergency. Come on. When Skiff opened his eyes, he discovered that he was actually down deep inside a mine shaft. Whoa, he said. Sure is pretty dark and gravelly here. Just then, Skiff heard a voice. Friend, is that who are you? Where are you? And who are you anyway? Sorry, I asked again. The voice was not scary or creepy or spooky at all. But it was more of strange and old, was how Skiff would describe it. That's when Skiff discovered right away what he saw in front of him. Oh my, he said. Right there in front of him was a small tank engine. He was the exact same class as Thomas in E2 class. Except he had very muscular cheekbones and his eyebrows were very bushy. Although he was dark red, there was a little bit of blue coming through him. Hi there, friend, the engine said. I'm Greg. What's your name? Well, I'm S -S -S Skiff, said Skiff. Nice to meet you, Skiff, said the engine. I'm Greg. Greg, said, <laughs> said Skiff. Well, that's a fine name for a tank engine. Say, said Skiff. Uh, you look a lot like... But Skiff didn't have time to answer, because immediately there was a rumbling noise. Oh no, said Greg, it's an earthquake. I don't think that's an earthquake, said Skiff. Then he began to saw daylight. And before long... He and Greg fell out of a humongous hole. Jack and the pack had been, ma had been trying to rescue them. We sent for help, Freddy and Dennis said. Thank you, said Skiff. That was very kind of you. Sir Topham had decided to postpone Dennis's mainland trip for another day. But for now, all the engines and road vehicles decide to celebrate the return of the long-lost Greg. I thought that all my brothers were dead, Thomas the tank engine said. Turns out that I was wrong. There is one still alive. Making that two, said Greg. 
and all the engines peeped their whistles, for they had found another E2 class engine that could stay on Sodor like the others.